All right, good morning, parents. Uh, let me just introduce myself. Now, I'm uh, Mrs. Ong. I'm actually the head of department for mathematics here. So uh, today with me, uh, I also have uh, Madam Kelly. Okay, so she's my Hi, teacher for mathematics. Okay, now, uh, now today uh, what I will do is I'm going to bring you through a broad overview of uh, what uh, your child will be doing for mathematics in P1. And uh, also in, on top of that, I'm going to share with you some little tips uh, that you can actually make use of uh, to engage your child in some uh, little math talk here and there so that they will feel that whatever they learn in school is connected to whatever they see in their daily lives. Now, uh, before we begin, can I invite all parents? Uh, you can either scan the QR code or you can go to this website, menti.com and make use of the code that you see at the bottom there. Can I invite you just to do a little bit of a sharing of uh, using a word or short phrase? Uh, can you share how it was like for you yourself when you were learning math? In okay, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to log on. Okay, so scan, yeah. Okay. This one. Okay, so this is actually called a word cloud. So uh, the words that you see become, that are getting bigger and bigger, are actually words that are more frequently used. Okay, so I see, it's good, it's great to see the word fun right in the middle. That was, that's really great. Okay, I also see tough getting a little bit bigger. Uh, we see interesting, or oh, I see one word disaster. Okay, <laughs> some say not fun. Okay. Visualization, easy. Okay, good. Okay. So we have about 51, 53. Okay. Now, I think one thing that is great is that we can really see uh, fun coming up very uh, obviously interesting. Uh, tough also seems to also come through as well. So, uh, parents, this is also a very interesting ICT tool that we use to engage our students in class as well. So this might be some of these tools that your child will also see as well. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, you can continue on with your responses. I'll take a look at it later as well. Let's go back to the slide. Okay, now, parents, I really want to assure you is that uh, I think it's great that a lot of you have very fun, very interesting experiences uh, of when you are learning math yourself. Uh, when you were in school. And what we should really strive to do uh, is also to make sure that your child also gets very high, very fun, very interesting, very hands-on way of uh, learning mathematics. Because really at the end of the day, uh, it really is our mission to make sure that your, your child is engaged, they have joy in learning, and they also, most importantly of all, develop a positive learning attitude towards learning mathematics. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, now, why do we learn mathematics? Now, we know mathematics is very important. And mathematics contributes to the development and understanding in many different disciplines. And of course, it provides the foundations for many of today's innovations and tomorrow's solutions. And of course, if we look closer to home, our day-to-day -day lives, we know that math actually impacts many aspects of our everyday activities, uh, from making sense of information around us uh, to even really talking about dollars and cents uh, when you're talking about personal finance itself. So with that, uh, what are the broad aims of the primary education, uh, primary ed mathematics education uh, really is to help your child to acquire mathematical concepts and skills for everyday use, really is day to day and continuous learning in mathematics. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we want to help your child to develop thinking, reasoning, communication, application uh, skills. Uh, through mathematical approach to problem solving. So really, uh, problem solving is the heart of uh, our mathematics education in Singapore. And on top of that, we also want to build confidence and foster interest in mathematics. Now, for BGPS in itself, the vision for my department is uh, really to help your child to become an analytical thinker and a problem solver. And how we aim to do it really is to provide a rich mathematical, mathematical experience. 
And we, through these experiences, uh, that is where students learn to think critically for problem solving. They apply what they have learned and they communicate. Because nowadays, it's not just about uh, pen and paper and do your working. It is really also about other different forms of communications uh, to show what they understand about mathematics itself. Now, on a very broad scope, uh, these were uh, the various different uh, concepts and skills that your child will acquire in primary one itself only. Uh, so it's broken up into three broad content strands, uh, numbers, uh, measurement and geometry, and statistics. So for numbers, they will learn numbers up to 100. Uh, they will learn the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, they will also learn about ordinal numbers as well. So ordinal numbers will be first, second, third, and so on. Then they go on to learn about measurement and geometry. So length, time, and money are actually concepts and skills related to measurement. Shapes and patterns are concepts and skills related to geometry. And for statistics, they will actually come into contact with feature graphs. So uh, for statistics, it might sound like a very big word, lah, but really they are starting off at a very, very basic concept idea of data representation through a picture graph itself. Now, we talk a lot about the school really emphasizing on providing rich mathematical experience and how do we actually do it? How do we actually operationalize it in class for your child? And really, it's through uh, this uh, carefully construction, uh, sorry, carefully constructed learning experiences. Basically, these are hands on learning experiences that your child will go through as they pick up certain concepts and skills. Because we know math is not just about addition, subtraction, I ask you memorize this and so on. It's really not about root learning of concepts and skills. Uh, what we want to also develop as well is also a process skills that your child will need uh, in order for them to move on further with their mathematical learning. So learning experiences, what do they actually do? They actually provide opportunities for your child to enhance and develop conceptual understanding through either hands-on learning materials or it could also be ICT tools. Uh, we want them to also have opportunities to apply the concepts and skills that they learn to solve problems. And it has to be in real world context and also non-routine problems. So this is to build their critical thinking, logical reasoning skills. Uh, we also have uh, platforms for them to communicate their reasoning. We will often ask them, how do you know? Uh, can you explain to me more? Can you show me? So these are ways whereby we get the child to explain and to communicate what they're thinking and what connections they see between the concepts, the skills, and of course, the new life, right? And of course, really why we want to do this is to help to build confidence and foster interest in mathematics. So in a nutshell, why do we do learning experiences? It's really to ignite the joy of learning, really to help make learning more meaningful for your child. And of course, we want to develop that sense of lifelong learning as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to share with you some teaching and learning resources that your child might use across all six years of their journey here with us. So uh, you see certain, your child might be using certain materials like multi-link cubes. This is to help them to develop a whole number sense or even a number sense, like grabbing a couple of cubes. You know, can you tell me how many cubes I have in your hand? Okay, multiplication and division flashcards. Okay, teacher and student clocks when they learn about time. Okay, play money. Okay, when they come into contact with money. So the kids actually love this. Okay, fraction this, they will use this from P2 onwards. And even math storybooks. Now, to share with you this storybook that you see here, uh, it's actually a P5 storybook. So even at upper primary levels, we still do want to continue to use such teaching and learning materials to engage your child in their learning. Now, at this point, I want to talk a little bit about assessment. Now, when we talk about assessment, we really want to talk about holistic assessment. Now, since 2019, there's actually no more graded assessment for lower primary students. Now, uh, I think I want to, at this point, want to make mention that uh, very often parents think no graded assessment means no assessment. But uh, we have to let you know that actually no grading actually does not really mean no assessment in itself. Now, no grading basically means that there's no grades attached to whatever work that your child has. And it's not like, oh, at the end of the year or at mid-year, there is a grade attached to whatever your child has learned. But rather, 
when we talk about assessment in itself, assessment is actually very, very important to teaching and learning. So assessment actually informs the teacher on the progress of student learning for future planning. So my teachers need to assess your child's learning so that they can plan their lesson forward to cater to your child's learning progress. And also if we do not assess, we won't be able to inform the students or yourself on your child's progress of learning. So, so assessment is part and parcel of teaching and learning. It's just that there's no grades involved. Uh, at this point in time, I also want to urge parents to change a little bit in your perception of what assessment is. Very often we think assessment is mid-year exam, test paper, exam paper, sit for exam, uh, very long look at the own paper, don't look anywhere else. That is our normal perception of assessment in itself. But parents, I want to assure you that assessment can be beyond any pen and paper exercise that is done in the form of a test. Okay. And the other perspective that I would like parents to also have about assessment is that assessment is actually not an end all. Very often parents uh, have very high anxiety and children have very high anxiety because they think that the grade determines uh, at the end of the day what that child is. But assessment is actually not an end all. From the perspective of the teachers, assessment is necessary so that we can help to intervene in the process of the child's learning to help them to close their learning gaps. So now how do we do assessment for mathematics? Now one point of assessment that we have is that through learning experiences. Now learning experiences like we mentioned is an opportunity for your child to develop conceptual understanding through hands-on learning and so on. Now this is really a great platform for our teachers to observe your child's development of conceptual understanding and also when we hear what they communicate about their mathematical reasoning and connections. So this actually helps us to make observations on how much your child know and what are perhaps maybe certain gaps that they, they will need to inter uh, as teachers we need to intervene. So LE could be a point of observation for assessment for us. Now of course for mathematics we cannot run away from written forms of assessment and really because we need to observe if the child has the ability to apply and recall math facts, rules, concepts and formula and so on. But it doesn't necessarily only have to be a test. I know there's a word test there, but it could be through homework, could be through mini whiteboard, like you see this little boy holding up, he's working there. You know, it could be this thing we call uh, the formative assessment toolkit. You know, you see all this ABC thing here, you know, the responses in class, or it could even be a math journal exercise in itself. So these are various different forms of ways that we assess your child's progress of learning. Now, very importantly, parents, you are very, very, very important okay, in your child's journey through their mathematical learning. Now, as parents, you really have a vital role in helping your child have a positive learning experience in school. But it is not reasonable for us to expect parents to teach the way that we teach at home. right? So what is one thing that parents, you can really help us is that please help us develop a good help us to help your child develop a good attitude towards learning mathematics, right? Now, we all know that at the end of the day, we find things that stick in our mind, are things that we find meaningful, interesting, and we find that hey, we can connect it to our daily lives. Now, parents, this is where you can actually come in to help us. You can help us by helping make connections, right, between what the child has learned in school to the world around them. So this is where, as parents, you can do uh, little things to actually help to develop more positive learning attitudes towards mathematics. Now, so mathematics, as we mentioned, is really day-to-day -day living. So do encourage your child to think mathematically in everyday life. And how you can do it is by your, your speaking, your role modeling, okay? And really showing them that math is applicable every day at home, in the supermarket, or even in the playground in itself. So this is like what we call, like we call it as learning experiences at home. Okay, now I'm going to share with you some uh, examples or some activities that you can actually do with your child and what are certain topics or concepts that they is actually related to. Now, let's first start looking at this. Now you can see here, uh, this is a traffic light, right? So now we all know that traffic lights, there are certain, there's a certain fixed pattern to the way that the traffic light moves. Okay, so let's say, the traffic light is now at red. So what color would you expect it to be next? Now, on usual basis, I will have some response. So I will assume, yes, very good. You'll say green. Yes, the next color pattern is green. Now, if the 
Traffic light now is at yellow or amber. What color do you expect it to be next? So it will be red, right? Now, is it possible that after red, okay, the color that comes after green, red is amber? Is it possible? No, right? Not possible, right? But why? Why is that so? Because that is a fixed pattern. If it goes to amber, it doesn't fit into the pattern. Now, have you ever wondered why must there be a pattern to the traffic light? Now, there is a pattern to the way that the traffic light moves so that we find we will be able to predict what happens next. So actually looking for patterns is in fact a very important mathematical skill in itself. So why do we actually learn about patterns? Patterns, the ability to recognize and create patterns actually help us to make predictions okay, through our observations uh, by seeing the relationship and de developing generalizations. So when we can understand patterns, it actually helps us to prepare for learning of more complex number concept and mathematical operations. So sometimes when we teach higher order concepts or we teach uh, higher upper level concepts, what we do is we generate some data for the children to see and we ask them to spot patterns and we ask them to try to figure out what's the concept behind it. So that's why pattern, okay, looking for patterns is an important skill. Uh, for your child to have. So this is just a very simple example of how you can engage your child, you know, getting them to wonder a little bit more. Now, I want to talk a little bit about use of mathematical vocabulary. Now, very often we relate vocabulary to math, to English, correct? So what exactly is mathematical vocabulary? Now, basically mathematical vocabularies are terminologies that is highly contextualized to the use in mathematics. So I'll give you an example. Now, in math, when we talk about a table, right, when we talk about a table, what we expect to see in mathematical terms uh, is a representation of data. So in this case, it is a data representation of the kinds of flowers and for each kind of flower, how many are there? So this is when adults, when you say table, this is something that they might appear in their head. But to a child that has no concept of what this table is, when you say the word table, they will think about the table, the table that they eat on, they do homework on. So this is a very simple example of what, how the use of math vocabulary actually could be using the same words, but they have vastly different meanings. So our children do have to be explicitly taught certain vocabulary like this. Now, let me give you another example. Now let's look at some pictures. Uh. So we see three sweets here, and then we see another one sweet joining in. So I'm going to show you three statements. So you think about whether these statements, do they mean the same thing or they actually mean totally different things? Okay, so the first statement is three sweets plus one sweet. Now add one sweet to three sweets. And what is one more than three sweets? So do they actually all mean the same thing? And if they, to you, they all mean the same thing. Why is it that you understand that it's the same? Because as adults, we have already come into contact with the idea that class, add, and more has the connotation of addition. So that's why to us, we are able to very quickly identify that, oh, this all has to do with the concept of addition. But for children, if we do not expose them to such a conceptual idea, they actually have no idea that it means the same thing. So it's good to also vary the kind of vocabulary that you use with your child uh, to express certain different concepts and skills. So I'm going to give you another few examples. So if you, besides add, class, and sum, all together also has connotations of addition. Okay, if you want to talk about take away, subtract, minus, even how many is left, this actually has to do with concept of subtraction. Okay, multiply times three times of something, two times of something. These all are related to concept of multiplication. And when you talk about concept of division, it's not just about sharing. It has to be an equal share. So share equally. And how many of them are in each group? So really, by using different uh, vocabulary like this in your child's daily lives, uh, this also helps to build some kind of a mathematical concept or idea with your child. Now next, you can also play games with your child as well. Now, uh, I know some of you 
will see very clearly that oh math bingo and snake and leather is very obviously very mathematical especially for snake and leather this is good for teaching uh, consecutive numbers uh, adding on uh, counting on counting backwards this is a very good game to develop that concept now if you talk about the connect for uh, tic-tac-toe and uno these are actually games that are good to develop logical thinking and reasoning skills and of course uh, another very good thing about these games is that it helps your child to develop different ways to solve problems so they don't see uh, only one way of doing problem solving there's actually multiple perspectives to it so this is also some of the things to help them to develop that kind of perspective ah shopping the supermarket is a great great place for you uh, to do learning experiences with your child so uh, I'm going to share some experiences that I have with my own child as well. Now, uh, when you go to the supermarket, what's great is that they have uh, like vegetables and fruits and so on there. And there's also a weighing skill available there, right? So it's actually a very great place for you to help to develop a sensing of certain uh, measures like length, mass and volume. So like mass, what I like to do is I'll get my child to go and be okay. I want to buy broccoli today. Can you go and get one broccoli for me? So you get one. I say, how, how much do you think this weighs? Also, he'll give me a 500 gram, 600 gram, and so on. They say, okay, go and weigh it for me. So go and weigh, and then we get the child to see whether his guess is more or less than what is the actual weight. And then we get them to feel, because I can tell you, actually many kids don't know the difference between 10 gram, 1 gram to 10 gram to 100 gram to 1 kg. They really have no sensing of the various different measures. Uh, volume is also a good way uh, for them to... Uh, also uh, see, right? So you can get them to see like certain things like uh, canned drinks. One canned drink is 120, 125 milliliters, say for example, a bottle drink. But then you have another big bottle that says one liter. So why is 125 smaller than one liter? So you can get talk a little bit about the different kind of measures. Counting money, let's say the chocolate you want to buy costs $3, but you only have $1. How much more do you need? So you can get them to count on and count back and so on. You can also get them to compare prices right so if you want to buy bread what's the cheapest bread you can find here so on so you can also talk about multiples of each item i want to buy one bread that's one dollar twenty cents if i want to buy two how much does that cost and so on now you can if you're very ambitious you can even get them to you know plan a menu within a budget in itself. okay now art and craft is also a great way that you can talk to your child about shapes uh, color sizes orientation now, these are some questions you can ask your child, you know, when they are composing their artwork. Now, I, I'd like to draw your attention about size and orientation. Now, you'll be surprised that some children will say that this is a triangle, but this is not a triangle because it's inverted. So some children have the idea that orientation actually affects uh, the definition of a shape. So then we have to talk about them. Why do you say that this is a triangle? Oh, he has three sides, yes, you know, three points. But does this also have three sides and three points? Then why is it not a triangle? So talk to them a little bit more about it. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about newspapers and brochures. These are also great talking points for you to develop a sense of numbers and numeracy with your child. So I thought this is interesting because uh, I know uh, it might sound like a lot for your P1 child, uh, but sometimes even when we're talking about your P4, P5 child, when they look at 60K, they actually don't know what 60K means. So sometimes we can talk to them a little bit about how, uh, what are certain things that they learn in class, but actually how is it also represented uh, in the media or in the world around them that they see. Okay. Now, parents, I also want to talk a little bit about developing number sense and fluency. Uh, now, it's good to also practice certain skills like estimation, counting and reading numbers, adding on and counting backwards with your child. Now, uh, examples of estimation could be like you grab a bunch of sweets, let's say, for example, and you show them, you ask them, you know, without counting, can you tell me how many sweets are there? And then you get them to count to see how far or how near their estimation is. So estimation actually helps your child uh, to develop competencies for them to pick up more difficult mathematical concepts later. Now, counting on, actually at P1, we are quite concerned uh, whenever if we get the child to count, they always have to go back to one to count. So if you have five and you add four more, so instead of counting on from five, what they do is they do five and four, then they go one, two, three, four, five, and so on. But it's very slow. And uh, the other part is that this does not build them on for further mathematical skills. So do encourage them to count on. So if they you have starting from five and you're going to add four, 
ask them to count on from five. So now you have five. Then what's the next number? Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so do encourage them to count on counting backwards as well. So do encourage them to count back from the number so that they don't always keep starting from one. Okay, now parents, I'm going to share with you the most, most, most important tip of all. And that is really to be encouraging. I think uh, for a lot of us, uh, our negative emotions actually really comes from a sense of failure. But the thing is, we also understand that with failure also comes the greatest learning as well. And I think the nature of mathematics itself sometimes is, is you're either correct or you're wrong. And we also have a tendency to say, no, you're wrong, do it this way. But for the child, if they keep hearing, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, it makes them feel like, oh, this is something I'm not good at, or I don't want to try this, I don't like this at all. So do try to be encouraging uh, to help to overcome their misconception through your own positive emotions. So even as teachers very often, rather than saying, no, you're wrong, what we will say is, can you tell me why you do it this way? Okay, now, what about this? So we try to offer an alternative. Now, how about this? And we show them a different way, rather than overtly saying you're right or you're wrong right from the start, because sometimes some children don't really don't take to it very, very well. Okay, so uh, with that, thank you very much. So I think we'll move on to the Q&A session. Okay, now the one question is how to make them like math. I have an upper primary girl who can't grasp or like maths. P1 need, the P11 need extra help. Any tips? So the tips that I've just shared with you. Now, there is really the greatest help you can help your child with is to help to develop that positive learning attitude. Uh, your child, day-to-day, uh, day-to-day uh, -day your teachers will actually help to close the learning gap for your child. As parents, just help to encourage them. Then also along the way, also help them to also see the reason why they are learning mathematics. So when you talk about doing all these home activities with them, they will actually start to see that, yeah, actually math can be operationalized in daily life very easily. And there's a reason why I'm learning this. So if you help them to make connections, it will help them to feel a little bit uh, more like, okay, what I'm learning is meaningful. Uh, this is something that I want to do more about it. Okay, so let's look at the... Okay, how often are assessment of student progress shared uh, with parents? So uh, parents, we will actually send out uh, some kind of a progress check-in at a semestral basis. Now, along the way, uh, your, uh, your teachers, uh, your child's teachers will also check in with you here and there on your child's uh, learning progress. So uh, as much as possible, we will also keep you in the loop uh, besides the formal semestral uh, student progress. Okay, can P1 students uh, go for math olympia as a or parents i think we want the children to really be very happy and to really enjoy the school experience first uh currently uh, i i do know of parents who actually send their kids out for like olympiad enrichment from a very young age uh that i, I think that is uh, your personal preference and choice but i think for our school we really want our children to ground their learning in mathematics and develop that positive learning attitude first okay uh, math 2021 math syllabus is new. There are two math books. One of them is my pals here syllabus. Are they different? Okay, now uh, the syllabus is new, but the content that means your concepts and skills that your child is learning is not exactly new. Uh, what is new is actually more of uh, impacting the teacher, the way we actually engage your child. So uh, the book that you have, the textbook and workbook, uh, that is uh, the new. Uh, uh, textbook that used across Singapore, the textbook workbook. Then there's another home workbook, which is actually more used for like supplementary learning for us to like do a little bit more with your child to also enrich their learning as well. Okay. Uh, surprise math test. Uh, are your parents, that's why I say, uh, we, we, we change our perspective of assessment, okay? Uh, it's not about, not just about pen and paper uh, assessment. Uh, I think uh, we strongly believe whatever we go through with your child in class is enough for them to pick up the learning and also for them to display their learning as well. So uh, we assure you whatever testing we do is really not meant to be a grade to grade your child but really it's meant for feedback for teachers uh, so that we can plan your child's learning and also for the student and for the parents as well to see 
how far you can, you know, how, where, what else you can do to help them a little bit further. Yeah, so that's about it. So don't worry about surprise math tests. Uh, are there materials? Are there any materials the school can share for us to teach the child at home? Uh, it depends on what exactly you want to teach. Like I said, I think uh, we, we very realistically don't expect the parents to reproduce what we do in school with your child at home. Uh, but basically, whatever resources we use are actually very simple resources you can actually find at home. So if like you're talking about like multi-link cubes, actually, if you have like uh, even buttons and things like that, you can get your kids to also count. You know, if you're talking about like uh, weighing scale and things like that, you, you can actually get all these materials very easily at home. So actually, whatever teaching and learning materials we use, we also try to mirror quite closely what we have in real life. So it's not like highly, highly specialized things. Uh. When is a good time to teach children math heuristics? Now for the primary one children, uh, the only time they actually, for the first semester, uh, they will not learn about word problem solving. It's really about building uh, good foundational concepts and skills. They will only come into contact with uh, problem solving semester two onwards. So what we will do is on semester two onwards, we will introduce uh, some uh, simple age appropriate heuristics for your child and this will continue on all the way till they are EP6. Okay, are there any more questions? Can the school, can, can child keep their books in the school locker? Has that been addressed? No, huh? okay. Uh, we don't have a school locker, like every child one locker, but what we do have is a class cabinet. So I assure you parents, whatever homework, uh, whatever activity book, workbook, uh, whatever these materials that your child will use in class, uh, the teachers will collect it from them. Uh, and so that we don't actually expect your child to like lock heavy bags to school every day. Lah. So really it's only necessary materials they will keep with them, like things like textbooks and so on. All the other materials will be kept in school. Okay. If not, with that, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so like what uh, uh, Mrs. Wong Wanchi mentioned just now, uh, my email is on the school website. So if you do have any other questions, please just let me know. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, the HOD for mathematics, uh, Mrs. Angeline uh, Ong, Mrs. Angeline Ong. Uh, there are quite a number of questions. Uh, we, we, we don't think we will be able to answer every single one of them by today, but we will assure you that we will put up all the answers to the questions uh, after today on our school website. But there are quite a few pertaining to safety and for admin for the next day or the next two days. So I will pick those questions to answer now first. Okay, I understand some of you need to go and view the recesses. That's fine. But I'd like to assure you also, so far the first recess has gone on very well. The children are able to finish their uh, food uh, quite promptly, in fact, in advance. So not to worry at all. Uh, some of the questions with regard to admin and safety, I would like to address them very quickly. There was one question with regard to how do we know whether our child has reached school? Example for children taking the school bus. Okay, our school SOP is that uh, usually the teachers, the form teachers, will call the parent if the child is not in school uh, by the end of the day, okay? Now, in 2020, we also have a system that is the SMS that will be sent out to all parents whose child is not in school by 9 a.m. So that is the interim measure and uh, parents will be alerted, okay? At the same time, within the day, the teacher will also call you. So you can uh, be assured that your child attendance will be uh, 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 informed, okay, whether your child comes to school or not. Now, another question with regard to uh, the taking of photographs, the official photograph for the school smart card uh, on Wednesday. Yes, P1 uh, students will need to wear the school uniform, okay. So, for today and for tomorrow, it is PE attire. On Wednesday, the 6th of January, the attire is school uniform for the photograph taking for school smart card. Okay, now there was also another uh, question with regard to uh, whether the child eats too slowly or uh, during recess. So I'd like to assure you, don't worry, your child will be given the time to finish even as he uh, adapts to the new uh, recess timings. 
Okay. Uh, there was also a question about whether if a child has a scheduled medical appointment, how do we inform the school? Let the form teachers know. Alternatively, you can email us at our uh, official email address, bgps at moe.edu.sg, which is also found on our school website. All right. Uh, with regard to whether a child must come in by 7.15 for the silent reading program, no, it is not compulsory. Okay, the child will only be considered late if he comes in after 7.30. So 7.30 is the cutoff time, okay, uh, for, with regard to school punctuality. But of course, if your child can come in earlier, we will encourage him to come in earlier to participate in the pre-assembly program, okay? Uh, okay, the rest of the questions, uh, that's not so urgent, we will answer them uh, in the school website. We will now hand over the time to uh, Mr. Hasri for uh, the talk on the uh, program for active learning. Mr. Hasri is our subject head for PE and CCA. So over to you, Mr. Hasri.